So today our main topic is short polynomials. Short polynomials. Or symmetric functions. So some some notation very good. This is my notation of the ring of symmetric functions of symmetric polynomials with integer coefficients. So this is this ring invariance with respect to the action of a symmetric group. And next, I use this notation, the set of Young diagrams. And Young diagrams are identified with partitions. Partitions. So a partition, partition, is an infinite sequence of non-negative integers such that they are weakly decreasing and equal to zero or indices large enough. So for instance, something like this. And to this, to such a partition, we assign a picture, a Young diagram like this. So lambda sub one boxes and two boxes, one and picture like this. So this is, for us, this is the same. Young diagrams or partitions, depending on the context. So next, introduce some notation. The length of a partition is the cardinality of a set such that the coordinates are, sorry, not zero. So in this picture is equal to four. Next, this is the notation for the size, the size, which is the number of boxes or the sum of the coordinates. It is finite because almost all coordinates are, are zeros. And the basic definition is that of Schur polynomials. Schur polynomial. Schur polynomial indexed by partition, so, and with, and variance. So by definition, this is the notation. Let me write as follows, just to emphasize that we are dealing with n variables. This is not a conventional notation, but it's convenient for me. So this is equal to zero. If there are too many boxes, the length is too, too large. If the length exceeds n, this is by definition. And it's equal to the ratio of two alternants. One is this one. the determinant of a size n by n, 
and divided by the van der Monti torrent. If this condition is satisfied. So we already know from the seminar, from, from the previous seminar, we know, know this object is indeed in the ring of symmetric polynomials, it is symmetric and has integer coefficients. And moreover, this collection of polynomials this is maybe I have to introduce this notation. This is the set of partitions with at most n coordinates. It's a basis in our ring. In particular, particular, this is the function identically equal to one. So it's a scalar, and we have can be written. Which is just expresses the fact that this is a basis. Well, what next? What next? One more definition. So assume, assume we are given a sequence, sequence of symmetric polynomials. So the sequence of symmetric polynomials, so we say the sequence Stable. Stable. Let me write more carefully. Stable. If two conditions are satisfied, first, the degree is bounded. and goes to infinity. So uniformly bounded, we can say. And next, so if take this polynomial and specialize one of the variables, say the last one, to zero, then the result is the previous polynomial. So we say that if two conditions are satisfied, then our sequence is stable. Well, some example. Some example. Say, let me write again. This is elementary symmetric polynomial in capital N variables. So.
and fixed and varies the state. This is easy to verify, and likewise. This is also very easy to see, but some counterexample. Take go to better right. Right as well. So us. So here, in this case, first, first condition not satisfied. And second, that's satisfied. And this is not stable. So this is not stable. The reason that the degrees grow as n goes to infinity. Now the, I want to prove the following result. The sequence. We arbitrary but fixed is stable. So how to see this? Just write the definition. So This can be written as follows. This is a ratio of two of two alternates. One is as follows. The next line is this one. So on and the last line and we have to divide by the van der Mond. Well, so what happens? Specialize. No specialize. What happens? So there are two cases. Two cases. Two, two cases. One case is so this means this means. And looking at this picture, this means that setting x 
the last variable equal to zero, the whole column is equal to zero. Close this is zero. And all these entries are also zero. So we get is equal to, to zero. And this just corresponds and this just corresponds to the effect that in this case This polynomials should be equal to zero. Second case is this one. This means that zero. What happens in this situation? In this situation, we have that. This entry is equal to one, and all these entries are equal to zero. And in this case, this determinant is equal to this minor, to this minor. And This case, the dominant is equal to its principal is mine. And the Vandermont is equal to the smaller Vandermont and multiplied by the product of these words. So Pick this product, look at this determinant of this minor, and divide by this product. This just corresponds to replacing N, capital, capital N, by N minus 1, which just gives us the similar sure polynomials, but with N minus 1 variable. So this is the result. So the result. So we conclude. We conclude. In both cases. Coincides. With. This. Well. And next we. Finally, we know that the degree is equal to the number of boxes, sum of the coordinates. I hope Alexei Lin explained this. All this is easily seen because we can compute the degree of this object and the degree of this one and subtract and we get exactly this quantity. quantity. So we have proved, uh, we proved the second property, this one, and we have this property, the first property, so this proves the result.
that the sequence of true polynomials is, is stable. Now let me recall the definition. The definition, definition of the algebra of symmetric functions. Algebra of symmetric functions is defined as a projective limit. Projective limit of the algebras of symmetric polynomials in the category of graded algebras. But comparing with the previous definition, we see that this is exactly the algebra of stable sequences. Stable sequences with term wise being expected to say with with term wise operations. So elements of symmetric symmetric functions are just table sequences of symmetric polynomials. And because we have proved, pro we proved that symmetric polynomials with growing number of uh, variables are stable, we conclude we have a corollary that this sequence fixed and is an element of the algebra symmetric functions. So it is called, it's called sure symmetric function indexed by partition or Young diagram. So this is the basic definition. And, and because we know that the true polynomials form a basis, we can conclude some remark. Remark. What is the dimension? Dimension of the ring of symmetric polynomials and homogeneous component of degree n. Homogeneous. Degree. It is equal to the cardinality of the intersection. So this is young diagrams with n boxes. This means this means the length does not exceed. But now we remark. If n is greater or equal to n, this means that this section is just this one. Because this condition already Извините, а там n большой в кругу в скобочках, в пересечении которое. Mm 
Да. Спасибо, вы правы. Это я Даже лучше, может быть, так And then the conclusion is as follows. The dimension of equals equals this cardinality for n capital N large enough. And combining this fact with the stability of uh, short polynomials, we conclude we derive from this that the map I denote it as follows. This is specialization. This map, which is the map which we use to define the algebra of symmetric functions. So if you, we restrict it to homogeneous component of um, degree small n, so is an isomorphism or n large enough. So we have some effect of stabilization. If we restrict the degree and the number of variables is large enough, we have stabilization. So these maps, these maps are one to one. And from this we conclude from this, it's easy to see, to see that the sure symmetric functions, symmetric functions, form a basis in the algebra of symmetric functions. So it's very easy to see. So this is a very important fact. So we can write the algebra of symmetric functions can be written as its elements are formal linear combinations of sure functions. Write this as follows. The next definition I want to introduce is the is as follows. So with lambda and mu are two partitions, two Young diagrams, and we say that mu interlace перемежается. Yes. If the following condition is satisfied. And so, and to write this, 
In LaTeX, this is <clears throat> and what I want to prove now the following result. So we return to Schur polynomials. So the number of variables is finite. The following formula holds true. Sum over all new interlacing with lambda. One can add because one can add it. Because otherwise, if this condition is not satisfied, I'm sorry, it's an error here. And minus one value. So this is called the branching rule. Branch rule. Правила ветвления in Russian. For sure, symmetric polynomials. How to prove this? Well, so first, we basically assume that the length does not exceed n, otherwise all is zero. On the left, we have zero. On the right, we also have zero. So, so this is quite evident. We can see. May assume. So the next step is reduction to the case we it suffices. Well, we may assume the last variable is equal to one. So we want to prove we want to prove the the following. Let me rewrite. А, извините, а почему вы в этих предположениях можно доказывать эту формулу? Ну, потому что если число координат у лямды большое, превосходит n, то и в левой части будет 0, то и в правой части будет 0. Мы ничего. написали, что длина лямды меньше либо равно n. Мы ведь писали, что полином шура равен 0, если длина лямды больше, чем n. Я написал, что мы можем это предполагать, поскольку в противном случае, если длина больше, чем это, мы получим ноль слева и справа. А, понял. А второй пункт почему можем предполагать? А это я сейчас объясню. Это я сейчас объясню. I want to prove this. Why? Because if you know this particular case, this is a particular case. If you know this particular case, we can restore this one. Hmm? Why? Because 
we know that the left hand side is a homogeneous polynomial okay, of this degree. Okay? And this polynomial is homogeneous of this degree. So we know from this that we have this quantity, a compensating factor. So, is it clear or not? Because we have, if we know without this, we know that we have something in some degree, but this degree should be equal to the difference, this difference. It's not very, it's not strictly necessary, but this makes the, uh, proof a little bit uh, easier. So I will prove this particular case. No? So the next step. Извините, а почему не может быть такой ситуации, когда в правой части будет xn в какой-то степени умножить на какой-то из x млад младших индексов, ну, например, на x первое какой-нибудь. Младших индексов. Просто... Нет, подождите секундочку. Мы разлагаем, так мы, давайте мы разложим этот полином по степеням вот этой перемены. Простите, у меня тут кто-то звонит. Давайте мы разложим наш полином по степеням вот этой перемены. Мы получим здесь, тогда мы получим как какую-то линейную комбинацию, мы можем тогда записать это с какими-то коэффициентами на, на полиномы Шура и на xn в какой-то степени. Так. То мы полагаем это xn равно единице. Так. И контролируем степень, поскольку у нас все однородно фиксированные степени. Тогда мы получаем, что эта степень, которая здесь, она должна быть равна раз, раз, разнице между размером лямбды и размером ну, ну и коэффициенты тоже какие есть, такие они останутся. Поэтому, если мы докажем, что будет вот такое вот выражение при э, случае, когда xn равно единицу, то мы восстановим исходную форму. Понятно ли это? Да, спасибо. Хорошо. Let's introduce notation, some notation. So set. And also set. Minus one, minus i. And I recall that we automatically have this restriction. So we need only n minus one coordinates. Okay, so introduce this notation. And now our equality, our equality. Okay? Equality to be proved takes the form takes the form one determinant which is this one Specialize to this condition and divide it by what? By the van der Mond with the last coordinate equal to one. This can be written as follows the van der Mond in n minus one variables and also multiplied 
by this product. So this is on the left. And on the right, we have a sum of and something similar. And what is this condition? We just rewrite. Rewrite the condition as follows. Strictly. Strictly greater. So at the last point we have this. So the sum here, sum is over the collections of these coordinates subject to this condition. Let's denote it. This is just because of the, this definition. So interlacement condition in terms of this, in, in terms of this coordinate is written as well. This is quite trivial. So watch, I'm sorry, and divide it by the Vandermund. But we see that we have one Vandermont and another Vandermont. So we can drop, drop it out. And we need to prove that this ratio is equal to the sum over these collections M1 and 2 subject to this condition and simply the sum of these determinants. How to do this? But again, but again, substitute, just substitute, substitute, sorry, substitute, Substitute on the left hand side and, and we get we get the last the last column equal to one, one, okay? Now the well-known trick, we just transform, transform the determinant using elementary operation, namely a row one, Subtract row two, row two, subtract row three, and so on. So M minus one minus row M. After this operation, we get that this 
all these coordinates become equal to zero. So, and so our determinant is equal to this minor already transformed. So we get after this. we get on the left on the left the n minus one determinant determinant as follows follows with the entries better to write with this with this like this <coughs> the i j entry is equal to And we take into consideration, into account, this product. This product in the denominator. So we put here and this quantity can be written as the sum where these indices are subject just to our condition. And this is quite trivial. One can see that this quantity is obtained by multiplying this sum by this difference. Yeah. And from this, so, and from this, from this, can develop the resulting <coughs> determinant and it becomes exactly this sum on the right. So this concludes the proof, this completes the proof. This is the end. Is it clear? Maybe some <clears throat> some questions. Нехитрые манипуляции с определителями на уровне, в общем-то, первого курса, по сути. Right. We have some some useful uh, consequences. So let me recall all that we have symmetric functions. Symmetric functions. Elementary symmetric functions, which corresponds to capital N variable elementary symmetric polynomials and complete homogeneous functions. So these are symmetric functions with infinitely many variables. 
because the corresponding sequences are stable in proof of degree n. And my claim is as follows, this corollary. Corollary. So assume, let me write, this is this partition and right or this partition. So this is one row diagram with n boxes. And this is one column diagram also with and boxes. So this are part very particular case of Young diagrams, the simplest ones. So, so this is notation, this is not the claim. This is notation. notation. And we claim, the claim is as follows. is the sure symmetric function corresponding to one row diagram is the elementary symmetric function. Oh, sorry. And this is element. So this is the claim. Oh, this is the How to prove this? So we have a general principle, trivial but important. General principle. So assume we, we want to prove, to prove, to prove quality of symmetric functions. It's enough to check the equality of corresponding polynomials and n variables for any capital. So this is trivial by the very definition of the algebra of symmetric functions. So in our situation, when we want to prove this or this equality, or symmetric functions. In our situation, it's easier to prove the corresponding claim for polynomials, capital and value. So, so we prove. Yeah, откуда этот общий принцип следует? Из определения. Из определения, потому что симметрическая функция это последовательность симметрических полиномов с растущим числом переменных и связанных друг с другом вот этим вот соотношением, что если мы одну переменную загоняем в ноль, то мы получаем предыдущий плен. Поэтому и для того, чтобы доказать равенство двух, семи, двух таких функций, нужно доказать по координатной их совпадению. Вот это и есть по координатной совпадению. Спасибо. Давайте применим это тривиально. Let's apply this trivial principle, but Important principle to our concrete situation. We want to prove this and this. So proof. It's enough. It's enough to check. This. Similar claim, but with finitely many variables. But how to do this? So we have to prove 
We can to prove this as follows. Using the branching rule, use the branching rule. What, what we get now, what is the branching rule? So assume that lambda is this one. Then interlacement with such a diagram just means that mu is also one row diagram subject to this condition. So this is easier because what we have to do, just apply the definition of interlacement. And if lambda is one column diagram, then the condition means mu is one column diagram where m is equal to either n or n minus one. Again, this is easy to see, but from the very definition of interlacement. So what we need to, what now we want to show, now we want to show that the branching rule, the branch rule or this is the same, the same as or But this is trivial. We know what we just need to prove. We just need to prove. We know what is the branch rule. So we know. So what we know, we know that it's equal to the sum. By the branching rule is a particular case of the branching rule of sure symmetric functions. And we need and we check the same or H functions, H polynomials. That is But this is trivial from the very de definition of H polynomials, because we know that this one is the sum From this, from this definition, the definition is trivial to see that what happens if we take apart the last coordinate. 
So if we take, если мы отделяем последнюю переменную, take it apart, what we get is this quantity. So the branch rule is the same for this particular case of two functions and for complete homogeneous symmetric functions. And likewise, 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 or elementary symmetric polynomials in capital N variables. We just get this kind of condition, which is also quite trivial, essentially. And so we get this result, quite important, and not obvious, not obvious from the very definition. So if you get the very definition, so look, look at this definition. What happens if you take lambda, lambda equal to zero, 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 and we have to get some manipulations with this determinant. It's possible to do, it's possible. But our argument, I, uh, it seems to me, is quite natural. It does not require this additional manipulation. Likewise for elementary symmetric functions also. So let me repeat the complete homogeneous uh, symmetric functions are particular case of sure functions and elementary are also particular case corresponding to one row or one column diagrams. One more result, which is, I think, is maybe the most fundamental in a certain sense result about uh, sure symmetric functions, is the so-called Cauchy identity. The formulation is this one. It can be formulated in terms of symmetric functions, of sure symmetric functions, functions. But let it's easier to state it in terms of symmetric polynomials with finitely many arguments. So in this uh, in this uh, version, the result is as follows. Take the sum over Young diagrams with at most n um, <clears throat> non zero rows or partitions with at most n coordinates. We have two sets of variables on the left hand side, and on the right, we have this one. So, look at this, at this identity. So, what is its meaning? So so this is identity, identity in what? In the algebra, one can say, of formal power series. In x's and in y's. 
because the left hand side is an element and the right hand side also we can just expand this product and we also get some form of power series so we claim that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so i want to prove this so again it's very convenient to replace proof it's convenient to replace the young diagrams to these collections of numbers where a definition I take yes. and now the condition for partitions is this one this one the partitions of length at most capital A and in terms of the L coordinates, this means the strict inequalities. And so the first observation is that our identity in question can be written as follows can be written follows the sum of determinants these are n by n determinants is equal to what one undermont number undermont and divided by this product yes. so this is just because we can divide by this quantity, put it here, and, and we just get uh, the product of two sure polynomials. So this is the same. And the sum of uh, partitions of length not greater than n is just the sum over these quantities. Okay. What next? <clears throat> convenient just for convenience right on the left hand side as follows but this is just the same nothing changes this just corresponds to uh, reorganizations of uh, this this matrix okay. and this one but uh, we get to plus minus signs is скажу по-русски мы просто переставляем что мы тут переставляем строчки мы переставляем вот эти вот эти индексы и перенумеровываем их в обратном порядке сначала пишем L n, потом L1, а потом их переименовываем в L1, L n, и тогда у нас условие получается возрастание, а не убывание. Ну, у нас выскочит знак, но этот знак, в зависимости от длин от n, но этот знак будет такой же здесь, как и здесь. So this is the same. It's a little bit more convenient to use this condition. Hmm? Well, so consider two matrices. Introduce, introduce two matrices 
of size, maybe look format, n times infinity. Infinity, it's... It's quite good in this situation, not dangerous. So A and B, what is A? A is as follows. One, 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 n times x one, x, x1 squared, x n squared, x1 in power 3, x n 2, and so on. Infinitely many columns and n rows. And likewise, we take b, 1, 1, so, and that L is just our collection. So I assume that the columns are enumerated by 0, 1, 2, not from one, but from zero. So we start from zero. This is convenient because this just corresponds to the, the power. Zero, one, two, and so Just for convenience. Because here we have this. And next, next let I'm sorry, excuse me, it's better to write. It's not infinite. Okay. Let A L is the N by N minor. It's better to write as follows of the matrix. The matrix A corresponding to columns so i mean let me say maybe okay so i mean what we take this this minor is extracted from this matrix just by taking the columns, some columns which are number L1, L2, and so on. Likewise, is the N by N minor extracted from B. Hmm? But look what is here, what is here on the left-hand side, the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, we have Precisely, the sum over all collections and with minors products of two minors. Okay, and applying the Laplace plus rule. 
we can rewrite this as the determinant of what? The product of A and B transposed. So we have one infinite in this direction matrix and trans transposed B. So this is of a size N, size N. The result is an N by N matrix. And this product is well defined in terms of power series. What is the entry? The entry is equal to what? It is equal just to because this is equal to the to the product This product just arises from this matrix product. Okay. So what we get finally, so just number four. We come to the following This is the Cauchy determinant. Classical Cauchy determinant. So this is the end of the proof. So I recall what we proved. We proved this result. We reduced it to the Cauchy determinant. So let me stop at this moment, stop the recording.